My father was my hero. His name was Willard Carroll Smith, but we all called him Daddy-O. He demanded rigid perfection from himself and the people around him. When I was 11 years old, he decided he wanted a new wall on the front of his shop. He thought it would be a good project for my younger brother, Harry and me. Every day for nearly a year, my brother and I would go to my father's shop after school to work on that wall. There were so many times I remember looking at that hole totally discouraged. But Daddy-O wouldn't let us stop. Stop thinking about the damn wall, he said. Your job is to lay this brick perfectly. Then move on to the next brick. Don't be worrying about no wall. Your only concern is one brick. Don't worry about building no wall. Just lay one perfect brick today. What was wrong with me? Why was I so afraid? Why was I such a coward? Such a coward. Just such reinforced coward. my shame. I was the weak. I was the coward. I was the coward. My thoughts were swirling, caused me to feel more shame and more self-loathing. And everybody's looking at me. I didn't have control over it. It began to dawn on me that my overcompensation and fake bravado were really just another more insidious manifestation of the coward. My thoughts were swirling. I didn't have control over I it. I was overcome with shame, 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 shame. Nice. It's the right weight, man. Last week, Will actually gained weight. You know, and this was when he was hitting the workouts pretty hard. 222. I put weight on. <sighs> Obviously, there's always going to be a reaction to that. <laughs> that's exactly... See that face right there, right at the end? That's exactly what it is. Goes into a totally different space. No, oh, that was nine, because see, it's my mind. So I'm trying to find a balance. I get it. Between get being it. safe. And I want to call security. Uh, <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right, I'm going for three pounds this week. Just make sure you put some protein and some fats in. So you still want to crunch. Use that crunch. There you go. Will really derives a sense of self from always succeeding and being well liked the need to feel like, I'm going to be loved, I'm going to win. And for Will, this is his drug. But unfortunately, as with any addiction, it can kind of get a little out of control. Come on, Will. Get your head back. Ugh, this little ass weight that you can't lift. Ugh. My father was military. He was Air Force. I grew up with the double-edged gift of discipline. You know, that was the hardest day so far. I slept perfectly, just woke up uh, really depleted. It was military motivation in my house. You get that flag to the top of that hill. And his other favorite thing was, when I send you on a mission, there's two possibilities. One, you complete the mission. Or two, you're dead. Exhausted. I got nothing. Yeah, shoulders back. Seven. That's good. That's okay. Yeah, we we all didn't turn up for the session today. Like, oh, it always bums me out when um when we miss a session. Yeah, consistency is key. So you know, it would be great to have him here. But uh, yeah, he's not. Yeah, he didn't. Can turn up for this one. How you feeling this morning, Will? Low energy. You weren't happy with the result last week because your weight was up? No, I was happy. I was happy. You were OK? But did you react to it in terms of the amount of food that you ate this week? Yeah, see, that's... No, uh... <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no. Yeah, you did. I didn't. I didn't. You did. I didn't. Okay. Are we? Is this an honest show, or are we gonna? Yeah, let's 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 <laughs> let's shoot for honesty. Let's right? shoot for honesty. <laughs> but I, de- I had two days worth of reaction. Um, what did you do? Oh, just like 500 calories in the day. Eggs, egg, b- boiled eggs, raw vegetables. That's it. The whole day. The whole day. And I was doing like 14 hours of fast. I would go. I would like stop eating. Yeah. You know. All right, so I know that worked before, you know. I was on a tear, the biggest winning streak in Hollywood history. I was working 70 to 80 hours a week, holidays, weekends, even vacations became a time to advance. I noticed that most people came back from Christmas vacation heavier and out of shape. So the holidays for me became an opportunity to extend my lead. I made it a point to come back every new year in better shape than I left last. I would work out and sometimes even abstain from Christmas dinner as an act of personal discipline. What do you mean when you say fasting worked before? Um... Hey guys, sorry, we uh, have to change cards. Yep. (laughs) Is that a tough question or something? So as I sit here right now, we're attempting to be honest. Wait, what does that mean? When it was was decided that we were going to do the the weight loss, Aaron said, let's weigh in. And I said, no. So before the camera showed up, I weighed in at 226. So a week before the filming on January 1st, you lost five pounds a week from just going. I did a fast. So why did you want to lose weight in order to... I just didn't want to be on camera at damn near 200 million <laughs> crowds. The 226 was the most I've ever weighed. Did he know at that point? Hey, Aaron? No. I told him later. For Will, goals are everything. It's pretty clear that that came a lot from childhood where Will really had the sense of, I've got to work, I've got to succeed, I've got to lose this much weight. He has to win completely to stay safe, to stay in control. One of the challenges though is control is always an illusion. And when we start getting into the illusion of control over food, it actually can get quite tricky. I'm not into fasting as a way of weight loss. I don't like it uh, at all. And I don't think it's a healthy way to go about it. It's not actually peanut butter. It's a kind of peanut butter. It's a kind of peanut butter. Almond butter. Almond Almond butter. butter. So it's almond butter, banana, and what's the cracker? Seed cracker. A seed cracker. We brought in Mona. She's a nutritionist. And also with Will's doctor, we're going to try to set up a sustainable diet that's going to be healthy, and he's going to have all the energy that he needs. So this is guacamole seed cracker and sprouts. We had to focus on this idea of nourishment. How's it gonna feel to nourish your body with the right foods? So, so we're trying to find pre-workout options for you. So when we look down at his plate, we wanna make sure that there is 60 to 70% of high quality plant-based foods. We also wanna make sure that there is a high quality protein and good quality fat. Second sip got better, third sip. (laughs) Yeah, this is horrible, so. But it's not about taste, no. Scotty just finished it. It's not about taste. It's not about (laughs) 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 So you are ridiculously disciplined. You follow your regimen in. You do your exercise training. And you're obviously going to be expending more energy exercising, Mm -hmm. right? How do we make sure that you are replenishing you know, in terms of your nutrition to lose the weight and get to where you want to be. Yeah, actually today we put a monitoring system on him so it'll measure exactly how many calories that he's burning on a daily basis. Okay. So if we're looking to lose a pound a week, one pound roughly equates to around 3,500 calories. So divided by seven, it's 500 calorie deficit a day, which is a minimal amount. Okay. Uh, Also, I'd just like to point out, it might look like Scotty's been taking notes furiously. I just want to show you. Yeah, so it looks like he has not been taking notes. Scotty has not been taking notes. (laughs) He's like, I wish I was home. Trinidad, man.
walk to the stage like a big fight, son. Excuse me. Good morning. That was an accident. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That was an accident. <laughs> Will treats the weigh-ins in his typically light-hearted way. So I was trying to lose a pound, and I gained a pound last week. But deep down, the number on the scale means everything. We got to know if we're making progress. It was a uh, 220.6, 220.6. That's exactly what we want every week. I've never looked this bad. I'm gonna fix it, though. Are we rolling? Oh, OK. So how are you going to fix it, Will? Uh, we're going to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> What's so special about Dubai? Dubai fits my personality. It just speaks to how I see the world, how I see life. If you're going to build a building, are you really not going to try to build the Burj Khalifa? And I guess the best thing about Dubai is that it's 12 hours away from Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, when they're awake, I'm asleep. When they're asleep, I'm awake. It's like, it's perfect. It's like no contact, no phone calls. I want to get my body and my mind in the best shape they can be so I can feel good and look good and be in a headspace that allows me to get this book done. Look, I, I think it's challenging for anyone to really change their eating habits, but the best way to be able to do that is if you can stick to a plan for a limited amount of time and start to see the results, it will inspire you to stay with that plan. <sighs> get strong. Don't you get strong. I learned how to, to discipline my mind at a really young age. When there was a flag to get to the top of the hill, I never struggled too much with doing whatever needed to be done to complete my, my mission. I got it. <laughs> DJ Jazzy Jerry. My guy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A smooth operator, a smooth operator. Jeff was the first friend I'd ever had who plain and simple outworked me. I met Jeff for the first time in a basement in the mid 80s. There was a band aid around his middle scratching finger on his left hand. Apparently, he had been scratching so much that the top knuckle of his finger now had a bend in it. I think there would be a misrepresentation to say that Jeff practiced a lot. It wasn't that he was practicing, it was that he didn't do anything else. You'd never catch Jeff in the kitchen or watching TV. <laughs> Jeff was standing in front of his turntables 14 to 18 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. By the time I'd get to rehearsal around 4 p.m., Jeff had already put in 10 hours of work. He was a hip hop terminator. He didn't eat, he didn't sleep, and he absolutely, positively would not stop until you were dead. <laughs> Those early months in Jeff's basement were among the most creative times I've ever experienced. I never wanted to leave. We were seeking our sound, but we found ourselves. We became the first rappers ever to receive a Grammy Award. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, I know I'm a big famous movie guy, but back in the 80s, Jazzy Jeff was the star. It was me backing him up. But you know what I think about it is when something is good, it doesn't matter how long it yes. is. Records were Jeff's bricks. 
it was fun for me to be able to write about them to show the world the evolution of the greatest DJ that's ever lived. And I hope I can capture some of, you know, the, the depth and the beauty of his, his heart and his talent in this book. So Ooh. that's what we're here for. My estimation is... That's great result, dude. You know, I'll take that. That's what I was thinking. I got carb depleted the other day and fell out of the, the workout. You know, the protein and the carbs and fats, and it's, it's like a lesson. I try to figure out what to eat and when and all of that to burn the maximum fat, build the maximum muscle, but still have energy. So we are outside of the Burj Khalifa. It's the tallest building on Earth for our cardio. We're going to just walk the stairs all the way to the top. How many floors, A.A., Ron? 160 floors. 160 floors. So we're going to try to scale 160 floors. I hope we haven't taken, <laughs> taken, taken on, on a little bit too much. <laughs> so this is official one. This is ground level. Yeah. Level one. So this is the first, first, first leg. First leg of the Burj Khalifa. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about the whole thing. Yeah. I think we should call it. OK. <laughs> All right, here we go. Through laying bricks, Daddy was training me in limitless perseverance in the face of any and all inner enemies. An assisted rescue area. I'm, I'm going to need that. For my entire career, I've been committed to a work ethic of uncompromising intensity. You show up, and you lay another brick. Pissed off, lay another brick. Bad opening weekend, lay another brick. Album sales dropping, lay another brick. Marriage failing, lay another brick. How you doing, big fella? I'm great. We're good, we're golden. We need to create some drama. It'll come. Nearly a year after my brother and I had started the wall, we mixed the final pile and laid the final brick. daddy will plucked his cigarette to the ground and said, now don't y'all ever tell me it's something you can't do. Hey. Hope our legs don't lock up. We are very, very tired. Uh, 60 floors to go. Let's go. My father gave me my name. He gave me his name. And he gave me my greatest advantage in life, the ability to persist in the face of anything, to always get up and lay another brick. He gave me will. I sit down, boys. Last two. There you go. 160, baby. 160. Jack, 160. Shit. So, I was looking at the building, and it dawned on me that we hadn't actually climbed to the top of the Burj Khalifa. And my sense of accomplishment turned into a dejected sense of failure. Um, so we decided that we were going to actually climb to the top of the Burj Khalifa. During his life. The challenge was that once Will started succeeding, and this is such a danger to people who start succeeding, especially when they start succeeding young. You've set yourself up that you have to keep winning. It's almost like a team with an unbeaten record. This is safety gear, so why, why do we need so much safety gear? Because I don't know what's up there, so this is concerning that we need this much safety gear. Another 200 meters. 200 meters. All right, let's see what happens. This is madness. We are now about to enter. It's called the spire, right? We're about to enter the spire. This is the individual highest point that a human being can be in a man-made structure on Earth. On Earth! Will is so able to sort of master anything through hard work and looks like the most eminent success. But that didn't come without a cost. Yeah, go for it. 
throw it out. It's a 10 foot ball. Well, I probably won't throw it out. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Yeah, please don't. Yes, exactly. So you plan on getting in the best shape the best of your life? best shape of my life at 52. Like and even better 52, than iRobot? Even better than iRobot. Damn it. Hey, Ruth, Danny. Just want to check on how the latest chapters are coming along. You're willing to jump off a plane? Will's always taking on hundreds of different things at once. I'm, I'm done. I'm done.